Today, we're talking rotary machines, the most basic and necessary tool when detailing. Did you know you can utilize this tool in three different ways to get a swirl-free finish? Follow along in today's video, we'll show you how it's done. Hi guys, Michael here with Marine Detail Supply. We're obviously out of the shop today here at Port 32 Marina in Tampa Bay, working on this Contender 24 Bay. Super nice black hole, but not looking so nice. Today, we're using the Rotary Polisher by DeWalt. This is my go-to tool. I've had this tool for seven years, and today we're gonna show you three techniques with this tool. I am utilizing a single-sided uh, Lake Country backing plate, seven and a half by two inch for anybody who's curious with a seven inch Lake Country backing plate. Links will be in the description below. First, for anybody that doesn't know about rotaries, they're used mainly for compounding. But what I wanna go over today is what most people skip out on when it comes to rotaries. These tools can also be used to refine the surface a little bit and get a little bit more clarity out of the gel coat. If you're good and you master this, you can almost get a swirl free finish with just this tool. I wanna to mention this because a lot of people don't think it's possible, but it definitely is. Let's dive in to the first technique. So the first technique I wanna go over is just basic compounding with either a heavy cut compound or a medium cut compound. For this boat, we've got a lot of scratching right here, a lot of oxidation built up over here. It's a black hole, so you see everything on this. I'm gonna go ahead and cut with level R with a single-sided white wool pad. You can also use a yellow wool pad if you're gonna be compounding. That's just a less aggressive wool, so you can use a less aggressive compound like Elevate or Restructure, which doesn't have as much abrasive in it. When it comes to compounding, you want to take this nice and slow. I always see people going way too fast with the machine and that leads to splotches, patches. People will ask, hey, why do I have discoloration alongside of the hole after I've compounded it? Well, you didn't hold the machine in the spot long enough to remove all that oxidation, dirt and grime. Gel coat is porous, unlike paint, so it holds on to a lot of dirt. You can go more aggressive with it and get better results that way. So I'm gonna show you how to compound correctly. And then I'm also gonna show you how not to compound. Okay, so the correct way to compound is going to be obviously put enough compound on the surface to start. I've already soaked this pad, so it's pretty good. This machine utilizes a soft touch, so it won't spin everywhere and you can kind of just spread the material out with the pad. Once you've got it spread out, nice, slow, and consistent. On this machine, it's so old it's rubbed off. I think it's like 600 or 800 speed. Um, I often keep it there most of the time. The machine is heavy and it will wear you out, but it's a workhorse. It's definitely what we need to cut a lot of this oxidation and dirt out. What you don't want to do is take the compound, squirt it on here, spread it all out. You can spread this like this, by the way, but you don't want to do this. Sling the compound, work it in like this, because guess what? We're not staying consistent. We're not covering a certain area for a certain amount of time and not being consistent is gonna give you splotchy results, patchiness, get a lot of guys coming to the shop. They're like, can't get this to look right. I've compounded it with this and that and really just comes to user error. So do not move the machine like that. Do not put your speed up to 3000, 2000. Also don't hold the machine like this to where it's hopping. That is the incorrect way to hold the machine. You want to keep it flat with a little slight angle to the right. That way when you move, you work with the machine, you let the tool do the work instead of fighting the machine. Because if you fight the machine, you'll see what happens. So nice and slow, consistent. Consistency is key. Now that we've finished out 
with level R, just basic compounding with a white single-sided wool pad, we're going to move to our blue hybrid pad. This pad is made by Lake Country, seven inch lamb's wool blended with foam. So you're going to get a cutting pad that also has the qualities of a polishing pad. That is why we're gonna utilize it with Elevate. And what you'll do is same thing, go ahead and soak up your pad, prime it up, spread it over the surface, nice and even. And then you're going to do the exact same thing that you did in your basic compounding step. But once you get the, the compound worked in, you're gonna turn up the heat. When we turn up the heat, what we're doing is we're getting the surface a little bit hotter so that we can cut out some of those scratches that are already in the gel coat and kind of melt them down. Gel coat is colored resin for those of you that don't know what it actually is. But if you've done any kind of fiberglass repair with epoxy or a polyester resin, it's similar to that, but it's colored. First thing that's sprayed in the mold on most boats and it is extremely thick for the most part. It's more forgiving than paint. Paint is less forgiving because it's so thin. But once we, once we get this worked in, we're gonna turn up the heat on it. Kind of melt down this gel. You know, who actually taught me the staple of this technique, I'm not gonna claim it, is Conrad Peterson which if you don't know him, he does phenomenal work on super yachts. Everything that I know, I've learned through experience and dealing with a lot of other detailers in the industry. This is one of my favorite techniques. You grab a microfiber and wipe this down. You can see how glossy that is. Once you touch Elevate to it, just gives it a super deep, rich look, especially on these black boats. These are my favorite. We're gonna finish the rest of this with Elevate up in this area, a little back here, a little over here, and then we'll move to our third technique using a polishing pad or wax or sealant removal pad. This is a Presta double-sided pad. It's synthetic blended wool and it's extremely soft. So it should not cause any scratching on the surface. I use this pad sometimes to remove wax and I also use it in this case to polish. For this step, we're using ignition. This can cut 1500 scratches out and it also will remove swirls. What you're gonna do is you'll put the product on the surface, same way we do with every other product. Saturate the pad and then You'll work it in slow. I don't, I don't wanna create any more holograms or scratches, so I'm just gonna work this in really nice, slow and consistent. Maybe turn it up just a, just a hair. But we don't wanna put any more heat or speed into this because we, we're trying to remove some of this holograming. It's hard to see on camera, but um, you can still see it just faintly. So I'm just showing you guys how to get away with not having to, to buy a random orbital, a 15 millimeter or 21 millimeter or a force rotation. If you're beginning and you just wanna test the waters, you can get by with a rotary. Many people do and they don't even know that that's not the only machine they should be using. <laughs> but it, it, it is possible to get by with just a rotary, but you have to know what you're doing and it's it's really important to use the right pad with the right product that's majority of the battle the other is just technique and once you master that you'll be ready to go so i am going to finish the rest of this out with ignition and the double-sided wool pad and ready for some sealing so that's it guys even though a rotary machine is typically just used for compounding I showed you a couple different ways that you can utilize the machine for finishing compound or polishing. I encourage you just to try different things. There isn't one way to skin a cat in this game. Some people have different ways of doing things, but any of these pads will accomplish similar results with the right product. So just keep that in mind when you're on a project and you're not getting the results you need. Try something different and the gel coat might respond a little bit differently. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you got any kind of value out of this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also smash the subscribe button. Uh, we look forward to making future videos for you guys. If you have any questions about the techniques that we use today, drop a comment down below. We'll answer those. And uh, also 
follow us on Instagram at Marine Detail Supply Tampa Bay. Any of these products um, can also be found there as well. I'm Michael Marino, Marine Detail Supply. I'll see you guys in the next video.